Hi everyone! In this video, we're going to label the unit circle with some angle measures expressed in degrees. But first, what is the unit circle? Well, it's a circle that has a radius of length one unit, one arbitrary unit. And that unit can be an inch, a meter, a yard, a centimeter, or one of many other units of length. Since I'm looking at the unit circle and it's placed in the x-y plane with the center at the origin, I can right away determine the coordinate of this point. Well, if the radius is one unit, then the coordinate of that point has to be one zero. Agree? And using this idea, I can also add coordinates of points where that circle crosses the x and y axis. So this point will be zero one. This is negative one zero. And down here, it's zero negative one. What else I can already add to this unit circle? Well, we're going to be focusing on angle measures. And a few angles that I can easily recognize when I look at this unit circle are 90 degree angle. It terminates here. Of course, we're talking about angles in standard position. So this is 90 degree angle. If I sweep this far, that's where 180 degree angle terminates. Down here, 180 plus 90. That's where 270 degree angle terminates. And if I make a full circle and come back to where I started, here we'll have 360 degree angle. And of course, at that same place, zero degree angle terminates. That's when I don't sweep at all. Next, I'd like to remind you about the reference angles that we just learned about. So in each quadrant, I can find or locate the reference angle. So we're going to start by identifying reference angles that measure 30 degrees in each quadrant. Remember that reference angle always has the x-axis as one of its sides. So in quadrant 1, the reference angle is placed here. In quadrant 2, it's over here. This is quadrant 3 reference angle, and this is quadrant 4 reference angle. And if they're all 30 degree angles, let's figure out the corresponding angles that terminate at each place. Now, in quadrant 1, the reference angle and the angle itself are always the same. So if this is 30, then I will put 30 degrees here. Now, going to quadrant 2, if this is 30 degrees, then what angle terminates here? So basically, this angle will be 30 degrees less than 180. So it's 180 minus 30, right? That's 150. How about measure of the angle in standard position that terminates here? Since its reference angle is 30, it's going to be 30 degrees more than 180. So 180 plus 30 gives me 210. 210 degrees. That's the angle that terminates at this place. And finally, angle in the fourth quadrant. So what angle terminates here? Well, if this is 30 and here I have 360, then I need just to subtract 30 from 360. So that must be 330 degrees. Okay, so hopefully you got the idea because what we're doing right now, I'm going to erase all that and I'm going to pick another reference angle. So this time it's going to measure 45 degrees. Quadrant 1 reference angle that measures 45 degrees is this one. This is quadrant 2 reference angle that measures 45 degrees. Quadrant 3 and quadrant four. Let's try to figure out the corresponding angle measures. Of course, in quadrant one, it's exactly the same, so 45 degrees. Now, quadrant two, what angles terminates here? I can use similar approach. I can start with 180 and then take away 45. 180 minus 45, that's 135. So that's the angle that terminates here, the one that has reference angles angle 45 degrees in quadrant three in quadrant three so that's the angle that i need to find it terminates here so i'll take 180 and add 45 so that will give me 225 degrees and in quadrant four that's the terminal side of the angle right so that's how far it sweeps it stops here but then to calculate it 
I'll start with 360 and then I take away 45. So 360 minus 45, that gives me 315 degrees. And I'm repeating this process one more time. I'm picking another special angle as the reference angle. Hopefully you notice that they're all special, right? 30, 45, these are two special angles. The third one is 60. So I'll take reference angle in the first quadrant that measures 60 degrees. Here's the reference angle in the second quadrant that measures 60 degrees. Here's third quadrant. Again, the reference angle is 60. And then quadrant four, here's the reference angle measure 60. Let's calculate the actual angles that terminate at each place. In quadrant 1, it's 60 itself. In quadrant 2, it's taking 180 or starting with 180 and then taking away 60. 180 minus 60, that's 120. Quadrant 3, which angle terminates here? I'll take 180 and I add 60. 180 plus 60, 240 degree angle terminates here. And then finally, quadrant four. Here's the angle I'm trying to find measure for. And I can find it by starting with a 360 and then taking away 60. So that has to be 300 degrees. So these are the angles that were labeled around the unit circle. And I'd like to point out that angles that have same measure of the reference angle are called related. So for example, 30, 150, 210, and 333 angles, they're called related because they have exactly the same measure of the reference angle. For all of them, the reference angle is 30 degrees. And then same idea for 45, 135, 225, 315. These are related angles because the reference angle for all of them is 45 degrees. And the reason we labeled all those angles around the unit circle is because in the future videos you're going to learn that it's actually very easy to find function values for all those angles using the unit circle. So more information about all that is coming in the next videos and in fact we're going to add more to the unit circle.